Happy mid-morning, guys. All right, I want to talk a little bit about safety, prudence, and uh, basically doing things correctly, thinking ahead of times, okay? Uh, a big debate is always out there about owning a handgun, okay? And whether or not you should keep a round chambered, okay? I want you to put you in a couple of situations here real quick. And I would just think about this. Think about the video that I showed yesterday. Let's say you're that woman in Oakland. And all of a sudden, somebody comes up to you, gun in hand, grabs you by the hair and starts dragging you around. Okay? I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the guy in the convenience store up in Michigan who had the six-pack of beer in his hand. Okay. You do not know ever when you are going to be in a situation like that. It, it never, nobody walks into Walmart and there's a sign on the door that says, be ready, there's going to be a, a gunfight in five minutes. Okay, You don't get that. So the big question comes out, should I carry my self-defense item chambered or unchambered? I don't know give you an idea as to why I'm going to always suggest that you carry chambered, okay? There's, and I'll give you this before I get into it here. Yes, I understand that for the longest time, there was a belief, if you will, that you should always carry unchambered, okay? And again, you've got to remember what this goes back to. This goes back in time when handguns didn't have the safety features that they do now. You had times where a weapon could be drawn, uh, dropped and could fire. Now, if you own a very old handgun, that's still possible. Okay. If you own something that's been made, oh, I don't know, in the last 30 some odd years, that's been taken out. All right. But I want to give you this. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is my CCW, okay? It's a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield Plus, 9mm. As you can tell, it is cleared, okay? You can't, maybe you can see in the barrel. There's nothing in here, okay? And obviously, it is open. Yes, I have the magazines. There's two of them here, okay? I don't go anywhere without this not even around my house without this, inside the house, okay? Because I'm going to give you another scenario. Let's say there's a knock at your front door right now. Right now, as I'm recording this video, let's say somebody knocks on my door. I'm not expecting anybody. Who could it be? Could it possibly be, oh, I don't know, a door-to-door -door salesman? Somebody coming up and saying, hey, would you sign this petition saying you're going to vote for Joe Biden, whatever it is? No. Okay. You know, I'm not expecting anybody. So I don't know if it's a threat. Fortunately, and this is this will go counterintuitive to what anybody thinks about prepping. Fortunately, I have windows I can see out the front of my house and, of course, the back of my house, any of the egress points, where I can see somebody before they get up to the front porch or the back porch. Everybody doesn't have that option. So you don't know who's at the door. So let's say somebody knocks on the door, and this is becoming more and more common. Somebody knocks on the door, you look through the window, you look through the peephole or whatever, and you see this, this guy in his white shirt and his little tie, and he's holding his clipboard or whatever it is, and you go, okay, the guy's not a threat. And you don't do anything about it. You open the door, and all of a sudden from the side or from behind him, rush three more guys through the door. This is what's actually going on in the country right now. So why do I say always carry around in the chamber? Real simple. If that exact scenario happens and I go answer my door and I've got a round in the chamber, obviously you guys know it's clear. Okay, I've got a round. I can draw and I'm on, okay? 
all of a sudden your adrenaline rate is going through the roof, okay? Are you going to be able to wreck your slide? To load around? How long does that take you? I don't care if you're Jerry Michelak and you're one of the fastest guys in the world about racking. That still takes more time than point. Hopefully not shoot, but if you have to, you can, okay? It's very important because you're trying to save your life. If three guys all of a sudden come storming into your house, you don't have time to go click, click, and rack. Let's say I'm right-handed, okay? Trigger discipline, just on the handle, the grip. Let's say I don't have a round. I open that door, and the first thing that guy with the clipboard does is grabs my left arm. Best I'm going to do is hit you with this thing, okay? Can't do anything. I He's holding my arm. I can't get here to rack. You're nervous. You're going to be shaking. You only get halfway back, and now you've got a jam. You're not going to get anything. You Now you're, again, useless. If he's holding my arm, I've got a round loaded. He's no longer holding my arm. Get my point, okay? If you look, mo check out any of your handguns. In this one in particular, you can see the, right here, the safety. Okay, it's a little spring-loaded trigger safety on there. It's what I like, okay? Gun's always hot. I don't, you know, you'll have other ones where you have your little, say, your thumb safety or whatever. That's fine. As long as you are familiar with how to do it without thinking, if you can go, and you're there, you're good. If you've got to look for it, you've defeated the whole purpose, okay? You need to be comfortable with your sidearm. Now, I'm going to give you the other side of this. Y'all know just as well as I do that the whole purpose of having your handgun is to get you to your rifle, right? Okay, we've all heard that. That's what you want as your defense tool. But you're not walking around your house canning your salsa with an AR-15 strapped over your shoulder. Some of you may be, okay, but I'm not one of them, okay? But I will carry this wherever I go. Mrs. P will carry hers, whether it's her body card or whether it's her 22, but she will have hers as well. Because you never know if somebody knocks on the front door to distract you from guys coming in the back door, you know. And now all of a sudden you've got two fronts. Well, if I've got two fronts and there's two of us and both of us are armed, one can watch the front door, one can watch the back door, and we don't have any problems, okay? The only one who's got problems is the people that are trying to get into their house, okay? But rifles, do you want to keep your rifle chambered? In that respect, I'm going to say no. I'm an AR guy. You guys know that. And if you keep an keep your AR with a magazine in it, or your AK, or your whatever you've got, okay? You know, I don't care if we got an AR-10, an AR-15, whatever would be, you know, whatever you have. Magazine in it. Racked? Chambered? No. Because those are not drop safe where a handgun is. There is a possibility of you dropping an AR-15, dropping your shotgun or whatever, and the firing pin striking the round and firing it off. That is possible. That is not possible with this. Okay. Again, I showed you the safety on it. The other thing is, like I said, unless you're making your salsa with your AR strapped around, this is your first line of defense. Your AR, your shotgun, or whatever is what you're trying to get to. That's what this is for. This is to stop the immediate threat so you can go stop a big, get something to stop a bigger threat. You're going to have time to chamber around in a shotgun. You're going to have time to chamber around in an AR or an AK. Chances are 
what you're using your pistol for is to immediate, unexpected danger. By the time you get to your shotgun or your AR, you've already had a second or two. You keep that shotgun or that AR potentially near your bedside. You hear a window break at 2 o'clock in the morning. You're in a bedroom. The front door just got broken into. you got a couple of seconds. You're not standing there in front of the front door. That's why you always keep a pistol chambered. Pinball out.